Um, okay, I'm talking about uh, chaining on the MTA. It's a, it's a technique that has a, or it's a compilation strategy that's um, quite interesting and that's used in dynamic language implementation. Um, oh, big. Um, okay. <coughs> Uh, as I said, it's a strategy for compilers of translating high-level languages to C. Um, it's invented by Henry Baker quite a long time ago. Um, Andrew Apple, another compiler hacker, had input for this strategy. Um, it's used in scheme compilers or in the scheme compiler and uh, utilizes the, the, the capabilities of this language, but it um, can be applied to all languages that need these features. Um, it provides support for the efficient implementation of com uh, continuations, the language feature of, of the scheme language, and uh, it's, it supports tail call optimization, which means that a procedure in a certain position uh, can be optimized, a procedure call. Um, okay, why compile to C? Um, you can use it on many platforms. Um, you, it's often simpler than compiling directly to nat native code or to byte code. Um, and it takes advantage of existing compilers and the optimizations they can provide. You can use it for cross-compilation. Um, external libraries written in C++ or C are easily to interface to and uh, it simplifies deployment and bootstrapping of a system. If you have something in C, you can always build it up from scratch. So, what's continuation? Um, it represents the current state of the computation. It represents what happens next. Um, to, you can view it as a, as a snapshot of the stack, the local variables, return addresses, everything that's, that's going to be used after, the, um, after a computation takes place. And you can reify uh, them, it's a, it's a term used for this, by re-entering them and instantiating the continuation and the computa computation that's represented by it. Um, some languages allow to use a continuation or to reify it multiple times. That means you can return more than once, which is an interesting concept, and it's, um, it's quite powerful in certain situations. Um, here I have an example uh, where the attempts to show where the continuation is, what continuation represents while, uh, while code is executing. So in this, this is scheme code now, yeah. and this is a function definition of the very well-known function. I don't explain it now. So, um, and in every position, in every, in every place in the computation, there is um, an implicit continuation that represents what happens next. So in the, in the conditional here, you um, have the continuation that is that represents what happens when it returns, when the function returns. And as the expressions nest and the code executes and the results of the code are then used, um, you see then this is this is, uh, sorry. This is here. You see it in the in the zero call, for example, for the conditional. The continuation is is the conditional itself. And uh, in here, where you have variable access and the the constant number, again, it's or in the variable access. It's the continuation is the zero call, and so on. It's like like here, you have an ex expression that nests and every nested expression returns its result to the outer, to the outer uh, computation and um, this, this is the continuation that uses this result and passes it to, on to the next one. It's a bit difficult to explain and I have my problems with it, but um, it, it, it's, it tries to, to show that there's always a continuation as an abstract concept that represents what happens next, what happens with the result of something that executes. Um, how can you use these continuations? You take a snapshot, effectively, of the, of the current state 
and uh, by re-entering this, this state you can implement every sort of control flow like exceptions where you just walk, jump down the stack like coroutines where, where different continuations invoke each other um, backtracking which retries effectively um, some uh, an alternative an alternative branch and uh, and a set of possible options or things like go to which are just jumps uh, and the continuation can be used if you have explicit access to this feature it can be used to uh, imp implement all these control flow f forms another thing is that you can uh, you can use it to implement threads because it's a thread is just a state a stack and local data and if you have some method of preemption you can do real threads these are green threads as they call them user level threads um, which has the advantage that they're very efficient you don't have system calls and switches in between um, okay continuations are difficult to to implement they have they um, it drags through, through a whole language implementation to provide support for this activation frames what builds up on the stack um, have indefinite extent which means that they um, they don't have follow a stack like manner of, of allocation and releasing they can be allocated and they can be reused at some weird point in time and uh, they are not necessarily released in the same or in the opposite order than they were allocated the next thing is um, yeah exactly continuations will can be created at a very high frequency so this thing has to be has to work fast if you have a threading implementation based on continuations this this must burn um, the next thing is that activation frames must be heap allocated to have this indefinite lifetime um, an alternative is to allocate them on the stack and then move them into the heap once they're captured if not then you just leave it on the stack but that's a, a possible implementation that's exactly the next thing it's how implement how do I implement these things you can actually take a stack, a stack snapshot um, that's theoretically possible um, it's very heavyweight it needs a lot of a uh, lot of space and it's just crazy um, the next thing is there's a make context um, there are certain api's that in linux i think there are i'm not not sure about other operating systems that can where you can create such an execution context with a specific stack and um, but it's it's specific for for operating systems you don't have it everywhere and it's a bit hairy to set up and heavyweight too ruby uses this approach i think but i'm not sure if, if the actual implementation now uses it um, you can use OS threads, operating system threads, to have an ex a, a separate state that you can manipulate, or lightweight threads like fibers. Um, but again, this is specific to a particular operating system. Another alternative is to use exceptions um, and to to book to to have some certain bookkeeping code that is possible to re-instantiate this call chain and use exceptions to 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 jump down again and it's it's very hairy technique but it works and is used in some implementations <laughs> uh, the problem is that most techniques are platform dependent um, highly complex or just too heavyweight too much to um, slow down in an implementation now an alternative approach is that you don't need use a stack at all or you don't use it in a, in a stack like manner you just uh, make sure that these activation frames that you can handle manually are created and reclaimed efficiently or as efficiently as possible um, this simplifies things naturally and you can concentrate on doing this these two operations as fast as possible and the next step is to translate to continuation parsing style something that I will explain now 
Continuation passing style is, um, is a transformation, a source code or a program transformation that um, where every procedure call is, gets an additional argument that represents this continuation. You make them, ex you make it, the implicit continuation is going to be made explicit and passed on into every procedure call. Um, this results in all calls being in tail position. They are the last thing a procedure does. And uh, the continuation itself is just a closure that is a function and the local data put together into a data structure and uh, can be invoked then, which is effectively returning. This is now an example of, the, tr uh, of the, the transformation. We have this familiar function here again. And um, now if we perform this transformation, you see that every procedure gets, or these, this user level procedure gets an additional argument, which is the continuation itself. And every procedure call gets passed um, gets passed in a, a, a continuation argument. This continuation is just a function, which again takes the result and continues with what follows this call. Now, the call to zero is followed by the test, whether it's true or not. And this test is followed by returning either one or com uh, computing the next number. So every, every procedure call gets this additional parameter, which is the continuation itself. And, and here we have the, the recursion, and it, it performs a tail call, a call in tail position where it jumps back and calls itself. Again, with the, para with the continuation argument, note that this is the same argument that's used here, so it's a, it's a tail call, or what the, no, it's not a tail call, but Yes, the, the, the time, the, the star, the, the multiplication is actually a tail call. It's the last thing that, hap that happens in this procedure. Yeah, and that is CPS or continuation passing style. Um, tail call optimization means if the TP CPS transformation transforms the the, the code in the such a way that every procedure call that's done inside such a, a procedure is the last thing it does. It doesn't have to build up stack space, so it's in tail position and it's the last thing it does. And um, it, it allows you to, to perform this call in constant space, so it's you can represent, you can do recursion, which is actually an iteration. And in languages like Scheme, uh, you don't have iteration constructs. It just uses recursion, tail recursion in this case, that, uh, that you can use to, to perform loops. And here we have, a, we have this, tries, this tries to attempt uh, um, which part of the code is in tail position and which is not. This is in tail position, and again, the one is the, the, the last thing. And this is in tail position too, but this is, it's an actual procedure call, so it's, it's called tail call, a tail, uh, uh, yes. Okay, how do you, how do you implement this? Um, there are, GCC does actually uh, a bit of tail call implementation, but it has restrictions. If you take the address of a local variable, and pass it around, it, it won't do this optimization. And it's very specific to, to GCC and it's hairy to figure out when the cases, um, when the cases apply. Another possibility is um, trample lines, where you have um, uh, every procedure call returns a pointer again to the next procedure and you have a driver loop that lets this run. Um, this is pretty inefficient and uh, it's, you're effectively interpreting. Um, the next thing is um, if you just, you just put it everything together in a big function and have a switch or computed go-tos that, um, that f implement these, these tail calls. But um, it's, the problem is that you need, you need either mechanisms to, to reduce the size of these, of these large uh, procedures or these large C functions, 
and um, it's you need static analysis or something. Oh my god, is it already over? Okay, <laughs> um, yeah, okay, um, I can't do much then now. Oh, that's fine. Okay, um, yeah, okay. shall I continue a bit or shall I just stop? A few minutes. Okay, um, yeah. CPS can be used to do this. Okay, now let's. It's, uh, uh, I miscalculated there, so a little better. Ah, it's fine. Okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. All right.